So the government's going to announce this 95% mortgage. We touched on it a while ago. So is it all good? Is it bad? Let's look beyond the government written PR press release that most of the broadcasters are running. Let's actually look at the scheme. Um, I actually have been involved with these type of schemes in the past in terms of you know broking these type of schemes. So I'll tell you the ins and outs of it. Um, you've got to look beyond that sort of rubbish that you'll see all the time. Um, so yeah, I'll catch you on the video. And one more thing, guys, like and subscribe and also make a comment. Let me know whatever you, whether you agree or disagree, let me know what you think about this video. Take care, all the best. Hi, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Right, so we've heard about the 95% mortgage that the government is going to launch at the budget. Uh, first of all, what is that with all this budget stuff being leaked? It is really, really bad. It's bad taste and it's horrendous really from a government to leak a budget. It's almost like getting a big bottle of Coke and then just letting the gas out little by little. You get it out and then you see what the PR people say, you see what the feedback is, and then you put it back in again, and then you release something else a little bit. It's just really bad taste, and you know, a government announcement is supposed to mean something. What's the point if it's just being leaked for PR purposes? So there's my little rant, rant on uh, the government. But talking about the 95% mortgage, we knew there was something on the cards when Boris Johnson mentioned this a few, few months ago, I did a video on it. Um, but it's not a new concept. There was a 95% government back scheme a few years ago. And guess what? It was called Help to Buy. Not the Help to Buy that we've got now. There was actually two Help to Buys. There was one Help to Buy for the new builds, which we've got now. Uh, but there was actually a 95% government back uh, mortgage um, under, uh, under Help to Buy scheme. And that was for older properties, which is positive. Um, on the, on the, let's look at the positives and negatives, because there are some negatives with this, um, with this scheme. Uh, and there was, there's a reason why it got cancelled um, in the first place. So it was around. So they're not doing anything new. They're just spinning it with the PR team and just spinning it. PR team probably don't even know that there, this was around. The government, the, the, those people, do you think they really make a decision? Do you think they really know what they're doing? They've been told by somebody else. And I'm telling you now, it was around. Okay, so... Um, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's a good thing for some people, and it's not such a good thing for others. And let's go through um, the good points and the bad points. Obviously, the good point is, you know, for those people that don't have a big deposit, it's a good thing, right? because you can get a 5% mortgage. However, that's just looking at things a little bit too simply, and that's what the BBC, ITN, and, well, ITN, ITV, and all the other sort of broadcasters are doing they're just saying oh 95% mortgage and you've seen some people that don't actually understand mortgages go well that's a really good thing because you know now people can afford it well mm, yes certain types so the people that are on very good incomes that don't have a big deposit it fits okay because what you've got to imagine is um, the I've not been a great fan of the help to buy okay not because of the scheme itself I think the help to buy scheme is actually very good I don't like it because it's restricting people to buy only new builds, and guess what? The new builds, are, you know, are overpriced, and and the developers know you're going to get the government, you know, whether it's 20%, 40% loan. So guess what? They push their prices up. So I've never been a big fan of help to buy because of that reason, but not because of the affordability aspects of it. You see, a lot of people that are going down the traditional help to buy route. What you do from a lending perspective is, let's say it's a help to buy it's outside of London. You get a government back loan for 20%, you put your deposit down for 5%, which means you need to work out a 75% loan to value mortgage, okay? So from an affordability perspective, a lot of the lenders are only worried about that 75% loan that you're gonna get, not the entire amount. Yes, there is some notion of calculations behind the scenes for the interest-free loan element of the help to buy, but it's not as harsh. So what that means is, it's not only helping people from a deposit perspective, because they're only having to put 5% deposit down, but more importantly, and this is probably the bit that people don't understand, is it helps from an affordability perspective. It helps those couples or those that single person to get to 75% essentially, okay? Now, where is it different from a 95% mortgage? Well, a 90% mortgage, let's take that, there's lots of lenders out there with 90% right now. You've got to put your 10% deposit down, but your majority of the lenders, bar one maybe, or maybe one or two, you're limited to four and a half times your income. Often my clients 
have got several issues. It's not just, oh, I've just got a low deposit. It's, I've got a low deposit. And by the way, I need the absolute maximum mortgage because I've got two childs, maybe a pension contribution, maybe a car finance, okay? So affordability is key, okay? So a lot of the people that we deal with um, not only are struggling with the deposit, but they're fundamentally struggling to get that income multiple, that four and a half times income generally, okay? So that's not gonna go away with a 95% mortgage. And that's why I believe a few years ago that scheme didn't do as well. So let's look at the practicalities of working something out, right? Let's take the maximum for now. 600,000 pounds is the maximum rumored to be, okay? So 600 times 95% is 570, okay? Divided by four and a half. So basically, if you wanna buy a property for 600,000, you're gonna put your 5% down, but you also need to be on 126,000 pounds combined or basic income yourself. All right, Payam, you're taking a piss here. Let's talk about, you know, let's not go in the extreme. Let's go for the 300,000 pound property, okay? 300,000 pounds times 95, that's 285,000 pound loan, divided by four and a half, you still need to be on an income of 63,000 pounds, okay? Or a combined income of 63,000 pounds. So this gives you an idea of why I believe some of the, um, well, some of that help to buy scheme a few years ago failed because although it addressed deposits, which was great, and although it addressed the bigger point of you can buy older properties, which is fantastic, that's the part that I like, fundamentally you still got an issue around affordability. Now, there is a school of thought to say, well, people should, if they're buying a property, they should have, you know, be able to afford it. A lot of my compliance, a lot of the stuff the lenders have to do is about affordability. Um, so if that's the case, fine, that rule, okay. Let's talk about help to buy, because help to buy, um, and this is another criticism I've had of help to buy, Help to buy assumes that everything's going to be hunky-dory, property prices are going to go up, and everything's going to be great, okay? Because remember, a lot of the affordability is done based on 75% loan to value. So you're essentially having to work out, there is some calculations behind the scene, but you're having to work out that 75%. So it means day one, you can't afford that property at a 90%, for example. A lot of people can't. Um, so there is a danger with help to buy um, that you know if, if things don't go right, if the property prices are come down or you start maybe getting through a pandemic, maybe people start losing jobs, maybe all of those flats start going up for sale, and maybe those flats start you know going under the market, maybe because they were overpriced by 20%, it could have really damaging knock-on effects. So. Um, that's my criticism of help to buy, but for this scheme, uh, it certainly is great. I love it because it works from older properties, and that means um, uh, estate agents, sellers, other the you know the actual market is going to benefit rather than the benefit you know the the developers, the house builders, share prices going up. It should ho hopefully try to sort of. Um, uh, help with the growth of first-time buyers essentially um, so I'm really pleased about that um, but you know you've got to look at all the issues around it and that's why I believe it's vital people looking to get a mortgage a 95% mortgage whether it's a 95% mortgage under the scheme or whether you're going for a 90% mortgage you should go and get an independent mortgage broker and speak to them I'm not talking about just come to me I'm talking about go and speak to uh, uh, you know someone who's gonna work for you who, who is not in cahoots with the developers maybe, get someone independent, get someone who's on your side uh, and work from that. It's, but I'm just trying to uh, sort of demonstrate that it's not as just simple as, oh, wow, well, fantastic, they got 5%. Let me tell you what else is not simple. You probably, if you've had any credit problems, you're probably not gonna have, get access to it, okay? Now, hopefully, it, that, that part of it depends really on how much risk is the government willing to, um, uh, to take on its books and also the lenders to so the, the lenders because on, on the normal help to buy there are lenders that will accept adverse credit so hopefully it's not going to go down the route of 90% loan to value because I tell you this now majority of the 90% loan to value deals you can't have any adverse you can't have any issues okay there are one or two lenders that have now come in that will say look if it's over three years old we will consider it okay but all the high street guys they won't do it I've got 
one really big high street lender that you know is one of the top five or six lenders in the UK. My experience with them is a 90% loan to value, although they say they'll do it, most of the ones that I've given through, it knocks them down to 85%. So although they'll do it, although you fit the criteria, their credit score is so harsh, by the time you put someone in there, it drops them down to 85% anyway. So, you know, looking beyond that and actually practically, and I suppose that's that's why we do what we do, because I'm not the BBC journalist there. They don't know how it, how it works. Um, the, what I'm telling you is, look, credit score is important. Affordability is important, okay? Um, it'll be interesting if it's going to be on certain type of properties, for example, okay? Maybe flats, will they do 90% on flats? Um, hopefully they will. Um, so, and also I think it'll be interesting because I think the positive impact of 95% mortgages government back schemes is it could make the 90% more competitive in terms of pricing. Because at the moment, although there are a lot, a lot of lenders, say 20 odd lenders that will do 90% lending now, and that's a big change from six months ago, and hands up, I thought 90% mortgages certainly for the short term were gone. But I was wrong, um, and, and a lot of this stuff you know, is my opinion here. So um, I thought 90% mortgages at the moment, volatility, maybe a deep recession coming. I thought the lenders were nervous around that and they wouldn't come back with the 90%. A lot of them withdrew it and we only had a few lenders out there. They've all come back now and there's about 20 lenders doing 90% loan to value. However, fundamentally their pricing is not great, okay, um, on 90%. We are doing a lot more 90% and what we have done, because we've got choices, one lender's quite good with credit score, another lender's quite good with affordability, another lender's quite good with debts that you're carrying, a lot of lenders good with pension contributions if you've got pension contributions, another lender's quite good if you've got credit card debt. So we've worked all of that out from the lending perspectives, but fundamentally the pricing's not great. So hopefully this 95% scheme will make the 90% scheme do something, which it needs to do because you're gonna have another scheme there probably better pricing and probably with the government back scheme so the lenders will be keen to lend on that so I think actually when the government do, does come up I think this is going to be quite good the 95% scheme from a uh, pricing perspective and from a lenders liking to push it because there's going to be some sort of leverage behind it with the government uh, that much rather lend on the 95% than the 90% where they're, they're putting they're putting their balls on the line okay so um, I think there will be quite a lot of uptake in this. I think certainly all the lenders that have got 90% products out there, I think they'll take that on. The underserved uh, sectors in the market right now are the self-employed sectors, the people that have had blemishes on their records, okay, and people that are on commission and, you know, additional payments. I think the additional payment side will be sorted out by the high street banks. I think a lot of them are improving, but certainly the self-employed have been hammered, absolutely hammered. Look. The reality is most self-employed businesses have been hit hard. They need to work something differently out because the traditional notion of, oh, give us your last two years accounts, well, what's happened in the last year? Can you, I mean, that's not a, that's a once in a lifetime event. So if you're gonna look at last year's income only, well, that's gonna decimate lending, okay? And that's what it's doing right now from self-employed perspective. So I think lenders need to be more clever in what they do, maybe look at the last three months now if, if the businesses have gone back in, maybe an accountant certificate, maybe some reassurances about the business, they should be looking a lot more, and some are into nature of business, okay? What is the business? It's a different thing, you know, running a restaurant to someone who's running, I don't know, manufacturing, which will open up as soon as, you know, that there's that sort of demand. So they need to get more clever around underwriting. Um, but on the face of it, obviously it's positive, from a 95% perspective. Uh, will it be open to foreign nationals? Um, what type of uh, lenders will take the uptake? Um, I'm just worried when the government does these type of announcements, um, you know, already we're gonna get lots of people making inquiries to us. Do you know about this? How, do you, how does this work? And I'll be honest with you, most of the lenders are trying to sort of work out how this works. So hopefully the government hasn't just done it from a PR perspective and actually been in dialogue with certainly some of the big banks, maybe the ones that have got stakes in, the, uh, stakes in it already, um, to try to make sure that this is thought out correctly before they've released this information out there. Uh, and my worry in the past has always been that there's an announcement and then the renders are running around trying to work out how it all works. Um, but, 
you know, that's the nature of the market we're in right now. It's always evolving. Like I said, six months ago or four months ago, there was like three lenders out there doing 90% loan to value. So certainly moved on. Um, the uh, and, and hopefully I will do another video on the um, uh, stamp duty holiday. But um, yeah, let's see what happens, guys. Thank you so much. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.